Coming up on Virginia Currents, find out how Richmond Cycling Corps can't stop and won't stop in their race to give teens a path out of public housing. Also see how an atypical CEO uses accessories to make a positive difference to girls across the globe. I look him square in the end. And poet Roscoe Burnham's enlightens us with his musical and powerful words on Daphne's Corner. Also, the thought-provoking music of young singer-songwriter Alex Norman. All next on Virginia Currents. Pictures getting old in your closet. Welcome to Virginia Currents. I'm Daphne Maxwell Reed. In 2010, when former pro cyclist Craig Dodson founded Richmond Cycling Corps, he had no idea of the profound impact he was about to make. Named one of 2016's top 10 CNN heroes, Craig, along with Matt Crane and Matt Kuhn, serve about 20 youth from public housing neighborhoods in Richmond. Their goal is to stay immersed in the lives of these kids from about age 10 to 18. All the kids come together on the Legacy Mountain Bike Racing Team, which began in 2014 as the nation's first and only inner city high school cycling team out of Armstrong High School. Over the summer, we made two pit stops. One, at the kickstand bike rental, where two RCC teens were employed as bike patrol to bring water, first aid, and bike service for cyclists on the Virginia Capitol Trail. And two, at the Armstrong Bike Park, where some of the legacy team were gearing up for the season ahead. In the projects, yeah, it's kind of tough. Yeah, like killing and stuff, so, I mean, you don't know what you're doing there. You don't know what's gonna happen. People don't try to get you on the bad tracks and everything, so, a lot of crackheads and stuff. You just wanna move away for that. That's why Craig here to make you move away from that. So I'm glad here. I don't know where I'd be if it weren't for him. Every kid in public housing will tell you they want to get out. It's the how that it's not there. We go in and basically demonstrate and teach them through a lot of tough love how that's possible. How's you been lately? No, I don't. When you say good and you smile like that, it says it tells me it's not good. Well, RCC is uh, Richmond Cycling Corps. The mission statement is almost, in a nutshell, whatever it takes. It's an outreach program that uses cycling as a lure to bring kids into what is basically case management. And we use that term loosely because we don't really know what to call it. It's, it's teaching, it's parenting, it's casework. Just like we did last time, you and me, all right? You just have to be there nonstop as a pillar in their life constantly. Even if they try to let go, you don't let go of them. You stay with them, you stay with them. All right, look, that's all it takes, right? That's good communication, man. If you're an RCC, you're part of one family. So we created this legacy team, which is the overarching, everyone's on this squad. Eight laps total. Come on, do your thing. Yeah, we brothers. Like, yeah, yeah, we tight, we tight. Yeah, I love them people. Yeah. Everybody doing good at their role. Like, everybody have a role. And yeah, everybody's we're getting better. Doing, yeah, we're, we're progressing every year. It's, we're a team, so we all on the same level. Yeah. But we role models, so we kind of like leaders, but at the same time, we still on the same level as everybody else. RCC keeps me more focused. It motivates us to be strong. They keep our grades straight in school. Yeah, they make they sure get we us do jobs. good in school. They do all type of stuff. They keep us on track. They keep me out of trouble, things like that. They help me on and off the bike. We look at retainment, not recruitment. You know, we don't like to play the metrics game, the numbers game. We we're not trying to serve 100 kids. We're not trying to serve 600 kids. That really doesn't work. 15 to 20 at a time is our, is our load. Once you get past that, the amount of quality 
the concentrated dose of outreach that we can put in to one kid becomes diluted, and then it just does not work. We don't have a program template, so to speak. For one kid, it may be they are ready for employment, and we do see that as something that's gonna help them. For another kid over here, it, it, it may be trying to advance them as a cyclist. For a kid over here, it may be uh, they failed their freshman year, now we have to take them to summer school every day. So it's anything and everything. So there is no break. It's 365 days a year, 24 seven. Matt goes out and wakes kids up before school to get them there. Literally knocks on the door, goes in, drags them out of bed, and escorts them to school. They get arrested. We're there the next day with an attorney to defend them and get them out. It comes down to a lot of fights, but uh, that's a pretty common thing, is being out there late at night. Uh, my first year, um, they thought I was an undercover cop. And so there was a little bit of resistance. Uh, one of the kids that we got in with, um, his brothers, his older brothers were kind of the kingpins of the neighborhood. And so because I was helping him, I got um, cred with his, his brothers, which helped us. And so now in Fairfield Court, we have full immunity. We can, the neighborhood knows us emphatically. We can do whatever we need to do all hours of the night. We even got guys that'll help us. Um, if we're looking for a kid, they'll, they'll give us a tip where he might be. Because um, they know we're just there to help. But that took <clears throat> probably three years to get to that point. And once you, once you build that trust, you have to do whatever it takes at all times to protect it. The minute it goes away, you're done. And the effectiveness of anything you do goes away. I, I lost these. I bought them a long, long time ago. If I clean them, I can sell them for a good amount. Success is relative. So when we look at our measures of success, the first one is none of our kids are dead. The second one is none of, none of our kids are in juvenile detention. None of our kids are using or selling hard drugs. There's a hierarchy. Once you get about 16 steps is what we count. You've got them finishing high school. Recover, 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 recover. Set the recovery. And it's, it's a tug of war. It's two steps forward, three steps back every day because you're going in and you're trying to, to disrupt what is generational at this point, how you function in life. But those ways of functioning do not, are not applicable to mainstream. And mainstream is where jobs and education uh, and an opportunity exists. And if you don't have the main set or subset of behaviors to function in that, you're gonna remain in public housing or you're gonna get out and you're gonna come back to public housing. Well, look where you wanna go, not where you are. If you ask any of our kids, do they know anyone that's gotten out? No, none, not one. That's hard, it's really, really tough. People in my neighborhood, it, it don't feel right in the projects, but we gotta try to make it out, make something known for ourselves. That's what I'm trying to do, go to college, do a, be a pro cyclist, and just make it out. Everybody didn't make it out yet, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it out. It gives me hope that one day I'll make it out here. Yeah. Yeah, or the star A cycle. It's people, it's, it's little guys that look up to us that's not even in the program. Like, they see us riding and just with Craig and just fixing up the bike park, doing work and doing other stuff that they don't see people out here do. So they look up to us and they want to be in the program. So it's, it, it turns into a cycle. Like, the guys under us, they come up and then people look up to them and it just continues. Our kids talk about how many kids in their neighborhood look up to them because they just have a job. The kickstand is our second earned income generator. Uh, the first one is the Richmond Bicycle Studio, which we opened in 2011 in Scott's Edition. So it's a way for us to have more autonomy on the funding that, that we bring in. But secondly, it's um, an employment outlet for, for some of the kids in our program. Right, Dave? Rubber side down. Rubber side down. <laughs> <laughs>
the kickstand, bike yeah. rental. We fix bikes, sell them, all that. Um, I have a, a bike patrol all the way out to Dory Park. I just ride, help people get them water, first aid, things like that. Fix their flat seat, all that. It's great. It's a great program. Loosen. Throw the bike around. It's smooth. Be smooth. Be smooth. Well, Craig, he's a nice person, kind. He's a good. He's a great role model. He just he always there to help when you need him. No matter even if you ain't got nobody else, Craig gonna help. Like when my dad died uh, in February, he was there for me. Yeah. Everything was just. I thought I was on quick cycling, but he make me get my energy and stuff back up. Made me do things for my dad. Made me turn into a better person. He think of us of his kids. He like think of me as a dad. I don't know. You fall in love with these kids. I mean, they get so deep in here. Try to keep these guys in sight today, man. You're having one of your best workouts yet, Mario. It's been a lot of sacrifice over the past um, six years, but it's worth it. You know, the rewards are seeing Tawante have this job, um, watching Antonio ride his bike to work, checking in, his boss loves him. Seeing the, the leaps and bounds that they've made, knowing that they were on this trajectory and we, we've been able to arc them this way. Knowing what's going on in their lives behind the scenes and how they're overcoming that, those are the rewards. Yeah, Vaughn! We're told the cyclists in the feature story are still keeping their aspirations high and doing well on and off the bike. The kickstand closed for the cold months, but will reopen in the spring. RCC's other revenue source is Richmond Bicycle Studio in Scott's Edition. It's a great resource for bike enthusiasts and supplies the legacy team with proper gear and equipment. For more on RCC, go to richmondcyclingcorps.org. In Newport News, there's a very unique nonprofit called Sailor's Diamonds. Its CEO, get this, is only nine years old. Her name, Sayla Holston. Diamonds are formed from pressure, and the uncomfortable pressure of being bullied drove Sayla to create this organization. With the help of friends and family, she sends her handcrafted accessories to girls around the globe. We visited Sayla at home, busy at work with her most valued employee, her mom, Jondalyn. We were working on career day in first grade and I wanted to have a nonprofit and I didn't want to start when I was older and I wanted every girl to feel special, unique and loved just like a diamond. I used to be bullied and I hated myself and that's why I started Say Last Diamonds. I make bracelets and I make necklaces. The jewelry is to sell to raise money, but the purses is actually what I'm sending. My parents love giving and I wanted to give too. On my vision board, the most thing that I see that I've accomplished is I, I cut out a piece of paper in a magazine and it says launch your EBIS. I think it's important that you should have a vision board because vision boards are things that help you reach your goals. The vision board helps me get on target with my goals. I've sent almost 300 purses around the world. I've sent my purses in a lot of places in Africa and in a lot of places in the United States. I have a globe in my home office and it has diamond stickers on it and with the diamond stickers I mark where all the places that I've sent purses to. I hope to fill the whole globe with time. The way I make the purses is I usually get like one of my two small tank tops and I take the tank top, I cut all the tags off and then 
I turn the inside out and I line the inside with duct tape and then I sew the bottom and then I fold it back inside and I put a keychain on it and I put a business card inside of it and I put a letter that telling every girl that they're special, unique, and love. I research the characteristics of a diamond and those three were special, unique, and loved, and those were the ones that stood out to me. I know that each time I sing purses, there's going to be a girl who gets it and it's going to make her feel special, unique, and loved. I'm not sure you have more strength. My parents helped me, and my grandparents helped me, and my brother helps me. Sometimes I get my friends involved, and I would ask them to wear the product to, and tell people about my business. Yeah. My mom taught me how to sell. It feels awesome to team up with my mom. Yeah, that would be a cool one to me. I get to sometimes tell my mom what to do, and that's one of the reasons why it's awesome. Which one do you want to make? I want to make... These are pretty. I want to make the pink. I have been able to teach my mom some things that are new about the purses and jewelry. It feels great to be able to return the favor since she's taught me most things, and now I get to teach her some things. Wow. Put it on me. <laughs> Dear friend, every girl is a diamond because she is special, unique, and loved. You are beautifully and wonderfully made just like your handmade purse. I hope that you experience an uplifting feeling of confidence, beauty, and self-esteem when carrying your Selah's Diamonds purse. Always remember you shine like a diamond. Love, Selah. Sayla is now working on a book about self-esteem. To expand her message of acceptance and self-value, she plans to send her products to President Obama and his family, Oprah and Steve Harvey. To help Sayla's mission, visit saylasdiamonds.com. Virginia Currents TV programs can be seen anywhere, anytime at ideastations.org slash Virginia Currents. And to hear Virginia Currents radio stories, visit ideastations.org slash Radio Currents. Aerodynamically, the bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly. Its body is too big, its wings are too small, but it goes on anyway because the bumblebee doesn't know that. I'm not sure who put the fear of falling into my family, but it's all they've passed on. Convinced that adversity is a bear that will swatch you into the grass, we weren't meant to fly, they say. Now, I've been tasked with raising my own hive of bees, and the parenting advice that I receive is to caution them that dreams are too big, that life is too small, and the possibility they'll never take flight is too great. Play it safe. They're advising to do what they did to me, the young bumblebee. I remember the first time I was stung punctured my promise right inside the colony. Stay inside the hive. You'll thrive more if you just get a good job and you make a lot of honey. My elders stared with a thousand premature judgments in their lenses, this poetry. They don't know what all the buzz is about, but I plead that when you are flying, success is seen in an array of colors. Life ain't always so, you know, black and yellow. The world is so big. Their goals are too small. You gotta aim high above rain clouds to avoid wet wings. So I journeyed on a turbulent path, reconditioning my mind to remember that well, I'm no dragonfly, but I span just enough to stay afloat. And, and my kids, well, they'll chip off the old stinger. All venom and optimism, testing the air. I look them square in the innocence. I tell them to soar like no bug before you. You don't have to be a firefly to look like a star. You go to altitudes only the sparrows brag about. You touch God's eye. You show Icarus what he did wrong. And when you make it back, there are plenty of flowers in the field. You find which scent works for you. You be whatever you want to be. And should anyone ever tell you otherwise, you state plain so their insect-sized mind can understand and say, the bumblebee's body, it is too big, and his wings, well, they are too small, and it shouldn't be able to fly, but destiny doesn't know anything about aerodynamics. Welcome to Daphne's Corner. 
Now, you just experienced the stinging words of slam poet Douglas Powell, artistically known as Roscoe Burnham's. This Richmond native performs everywhere, from coffee shops and schools to universities, theaters, and arenas. He's the founder and coach for the Writer's Den Poetry Slam team based out of Richmond. He has dedicated his life to poetry, education, and entertainment. We welcome you, Douglas, or should I call you... Roscoe. Roscoe's Roscoe. fine. Either oh, or is fine. Whatever no. you're comfortable with. All righty. <sighs> now, you do slam poetry, and for those of us who don't know, what exactly is slam poetry? So, uh, slam poetry is a uh, performance poetry arena, basically, uh, where poets compete uh, against other poets or teams of poets um, in a competition. Uh, so, you know, poets will go on stage and perform in front of judges. They'll get scores, best scores at the end of the night win. And there's like prize money sometimes and there's national championships and so on and so forth. Ah, and where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, this poem that we just heard, you get from real life. Right. Growing up. So where do you get all the rest of your inspiration from? So I pull a lot from, from real experiences. Poetry has been uh, an avenue for, uh, for me for, for a number of years to get myself out of my depression, to talk about social issues. Um, and uh, with this particular poem, um, my kids are a huge inspiration for me. Good. I love metaphorical poetry, and this was very metaphorical. Yeah. What other metaphors have you used to express what you want to express in slam? Um, I pull from a, a, a wide range of things, and whether we're talking about bumblebees or if we're talking about metaphysics um, as, a, as an extended metaphor, um, it, it, I pull a little bit from everything, whatever's around me. Now, your poems are very inspirational. I mean, the one that we just heard, very inspirational. What do you want your audience to feel or do after they hear your poetry? Um, I want them to um, aspire to change the, the, their community, their world for the better. Um, th the reason I got into this was that it, poetry made an impact on my life and performing these had an impact on other people and I want those people who are impacted to go and impact other lives. And tell us a little about that impact that it had on your life. Poetry um, has been kind of my saving grace. When I was in school I, I felt kind of outcasted. Um, depressed, and poetry was a way of me getting all of my feelings and emotions on paper and, and, and getting it kind of off my chest. And you had guidance in developing your expressive uh, voice? I, I read a lot, um, and whether that was, uh, you know, James Baldwin or, or Langston Hughes, that was kind of where I drew my inspiration and where I, what pushed my art forward. Um, and then from, from there, I just, I've been just writing and just honing my own craft. Now, how does one get into slam poetry? Um, well, they can come to the Writer's Den because we, uh, we have a slam every, every month, last Wednesday of the month. Um, we partner with the Legba Folklore Society mm -hmm. and we're there on, the, on First and Broad uh, the last Wednesday of the month. Ah, tell us about the Writer's Den. The Writer's Den is a poetry collective um, and a poetry slam team that sends a team that represents Richmond to uh, regional and national competitions. And where do the students come from that are in the den? So uh, they come from, from all over. Um, they're, they're local poets who uh, have either uh, been competing for a number of years and, and want to represent the city they come from or the city that they're in. Um, there are VCU students, VUU alumni. Uh, they, they come from all over. Well, thank you so much for coming to Daphne's Corner. <laughs> and for more information on Douglas Powell, artistically known as Roscoe Burnham's, visit roscoeb.webs.com. I'm traveling through every door with only thread of a bird. Today's spotlight on Virginia music shines on folk singer-songwriter Alex Norman. Her delicate yet dynamic voice and building rhythms enhance her storytelling and thought-provoking lyrics. Alex has been recognized in various songwriting competitions, and you can see her strumming at coffee shops and breweries around Richmond and Charlottesville. She is also a talented artist of mixed media like charcoal, chalk, oils, wood, and has delved into interactive art with her contemplative sandboxes. We leave you now with one of her performances at Ashland Coffee and Tea. Thanks for watching, Virginia Currents. Join us next time for more inspiring stories. I'm Daphne Maxwell Reed. My dear, will you save me or kill me as I'm walking down the road?
girl ever been trying to reach out somewhere? Don't know if I could go. Out here it's like I'm not afraid of anything and through those city windows I'll be suffering in a small desk in a classroom My gear, will you save me or kill me as I'm walking down the road Girl, I've been trying to reach out some, but don't know if I could go. You're a string around my finger, still can't remember what I want. Put to the test with a word of rest, but that just made me a stranger, a stranger. You're such a long way from bus rides at sunrise. I've awakened in the morning, so far from. 